At the end of every one of these episodes, I ask you a question. Last week I asked, what number place do you think it will be when I am finished with this purposefully homeless journey? Little did I know that less than a week later, I would be in the final place. Place 111, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach where we talk about real things because it's the real, honest, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. Normally, Real Talk has something to do with something a little less than fun to talk about and I'm sure this week's topic is probably gonna touch a nerve or two but generally speaking, it's actually something pretty positive. I want to talk about celebrating the good things with people who are celebrating good things. The Bible talks about rejoicing with those who rejoice and mourning with those who mourn and carrying each other's burdens. And we tend to get stuck on the mourn with those who mourn and carry each other's burdens. And those are really good things and we need to be doing those things with each other. Those are really good ways to demonstrate unconditional love. But what often gets overlooked is the celebration or rejoicing with those who rejoice because it's so easy to slip into envy and jealousy and coveting when we see good things happen for other people. We might say, congratulations. We might actually really feel it and mean it for a minute, but then we have thoughts that reveal that the opposite is actually going on in our hearts, where we're not actually happy for them. We are more miserable and sorry for ourselves than we are happy for someone else. Now, honestly, I'm not trying to talk about this because something good happened to me. I'm sharing this because I was trying to pray through and think about what I can talk about today that isn't just the end of this purposefully homeless season. I wanted to share something useful and valuable and I thought about how I would respond to someone else sharing really good news. And I've had plenty of opportunities to experience things like this, especially in the last year and five months where a friend would be traveling and being led by the spirit similarly to me, but then they would get a place to live or they would get a job or friends in the fitness industry would launch new courses and would be really successful with those course launches or would announce a new book they wrote or they would put on a successful retreat. All of these things are things that I've wanted to do or have done in the past and simply haven't been able to do them while on this journey because the time is not right for those things. And I have to admit, although there have been many opportunities like this where I actually have responded really well because my heart is excited for them, there have also been a few times where I caught myself really upset about it, jealous, there was one time in particular where I was actually staying with a friend who was doing really well in the things that I had to give up but still wanted to do while I was homeless, jobless, pretty broke, and trusting that God had a plan and a purpose for me that included the dreams and the visions that I had in the fitness industry. And even if he didn't, that he had something better planned and I had to wait on his timing for that. But in the meantime, I found myself being jealous of this friend that I love so dearly. And the Holy Spirit convicted me of that and I ended up having this conversation with her and apologizing even though she had no idea. And I'm sharing that because I know that there was a lot of healing, freedom, and reward, even if I don't see it just yet on the other side of that honest confession because it drew me and my friend closer together. She felt respected for me being honest with her like that. I know I felt lighter after confessing this to her and apologizing and my conscience and convictions were relieved. Now, just as a disclaimer, all of these circumstances, when we are in the middle of them, require discernment. So before you go telling all your friends about all the things that you need to apologize for that they have no idea about, ask the Lord, ask Holy Spirit for how, when, and if. Sometimes things are best dealt with with you and the Lord because they'd end up hurting other people. That said, I am a huge advocate for the truth and bringing things into the light. Y'all, we are lamps in this world. We are called 
to shed light on things hidden in darkness simply by being who we are. Not necessarily by calling them out, but simply by being who we are, where we are, things will be exposed. So keep loving, keep living like Jesus, even if you never mention a thing. Don't hide your brilliance, don't hide your light, don't hide your love, don't keep that to yourself. Be that lamp. That said, everything that I'm experiencing right now is something that I know, that I know, that I know that God led me into. And I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> and like I said, I had no idea that when I shared last week that I was in place 109, that I would be done with this journey less than a week later. I'll explain the whole story when I have a better opportunity to do so, but my boyfriend happens to be Canadian and his entire family lives in Victoria and his aunt had a basement suite bedroom available. It's the same place his sister is staying. So I get to live with his sister and it's on the water, which is something that I have prayed for when asking for a place to live. And it's not permanent as in, I know I won't be in this place, forever, but I'll be here as long as I need to be here. And when I came over the border, I don't recommend this by the way, I hadn't applied for a visa yet. And the border patrol had a 50-50 decision to make whether to allow me to come through or send me back into the States. But my boyfriend had flown down to LA to help me drive up a U-Haul with all of my things from storage. I canceled my storage rental and we drove from Los Angeles to the Canadian border, an over 20 hour drive. And if they had turned us away and not let me into the country, we would have had another six plus hour drive to get to my family's house in Spokane where they were not expecting me. <laughs> but God, <sighs> the favor of the Lord moved this man at the border to give me not only a few days grace, but he gave me a visitor's pass for six months. So I was able to get into the country and I'm gonna spend this time applying for permanent residency. And if that doesn't work, then I know that God has other plans and I can trust him with that too. But I have six months here where I'm not allowed to work in Canada, which means I can rest and write and make these videos for you and rest. <laughs> And I can't tell you how exhausted I am. It's an exhaustion that I couldn't have realized until I got to this place where I can allow myself to actually just stop. And I have someone who loves me taking care of me. And I have God who sustained me purposefully homeless as an independent missionary for about a year and a half without a job, paying all of my bills supernaturally through your help. And I don't have the words to tell you how grateful I am. And all I'm asking of you right now is that you would celebrate with me and give God the glory for the great and wonderful things he's done. And I know that this is not the end of living missionally or being spirit led. I will do that the rest of my life and I will go wherever he sends me. But to have a home, to have a bed, to have a kitchen and a bathtub <laughs> and these little things that I haven't had and space of my own and a door that closes so I can have privacy. You guys, these things are not things to take for granted if you have that, if you have any of those things. So just take a minute, five minutes, an hour if you can and celebrate God's goodness. And the next time that you have an opportunity to respond to a friend or loved one's good news, especially when it's something that you've been praying for for yourself, thank God for that. That is a next level act of gratitude. And it prophetically declares that your faith believes that even if someone else got what you thought you wanted or that you do really want, that God is big enough and good enough to provide for you as well. And I promise you, it will be better than you ever imagined. All I asked for was a home and he gave me a home on the water. All I asked for was a home and he gave me my own space on the water and a boyfriend. <laughs> God is willing, he loves you, and he always has more than you could ask or imagine in store for you because he loves you, because you're his, not because you do anything for him. God didn't do this for me above and beyond what I asked because I did this journey. No, he just loves me that much and he knows my heart. So celebrate with those who are celebrating and trust God with everything that your heart desires. He's good, he's better than you could ever imagine. And whatever he's taking you through right now, 
I promise you he's doing good things through it, but he is gonna ask you to trust him with some hard things along the way. Your job, same as my job, is to say yes, I trust you, I surrender my will, you know better than me, let's go. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with a friend. If you want to support this ministry in any way, there are links in the description box below, and I'd love to have you as part of my Patreon family. There's a link to that down there too. I love you. I'm praying for you. Come check out the Sunday prayer call on Instagram live every Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'll see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, tell me in the comments below one thing that I can celebrate with you. Tell me, I'm excited for you. I'll see you next time.